So here we are with Evolution of the Golf Swing, part five. I've just rolled a ball towards you using my putter. The Americans call it the flat stick. Why? Because there's barely no loft on the putter face at all. There might be three or four degrees of loft. But essentially it's the flat stick and it makes the ball roll along the ground in a very accurate manner. Now why am I talking to you about a putter? Well, a, the putter has gone through an evolution. If you look at putters 200 years ago, the toe of the club hung straight downwards. And when you have a situation where the toe of the club is above the shaft, there's a desire of the club head to want to twist back and through. And in the days of hickory on long putts, the volatility of the hickory shaft and that rolling mechanism led for inaccuracy. So, what started to happen then was weight was put on the back of the putter head, and that meant the putter head didn't hang quite so far down. And the more weight you can get behind, the more the putter face changes. Then, you can see very clearly in this ping gnome putter, there is a crank in the shaft. The main part of the shaft points down to the sweet spot, but there's also a cranking effect from the front and the back. Now, when you get the cranking effect, again, it has the influence of twisting the face to, to about 45 degrees. And right through the 1900s, putters went from hanging vertically to gradually going through this evolutionary process. And by the early 1970s, a man called Harold Swash, one of my design and teaching heroes, who has designed so many of the Yes Putter range, and in this Ping Gnome putter, you can see that the face hangs, and it's called face balanced because the face is pointing skywards. Old-fashioned putters hung downwards, but from the early 70s, putters became face-balanced. And that means when you have a face-balanced putter, there's far less likelihood of the club face twisting and rolling. When you have a face-balanced putter, accuracy and sweetness of contact is ensured. But there's a classic example over an extended period of time how the, the manufacturer of golf clubs evolved through 90 degrees of rotation. Now, in the same way that clubs are designed to do a certain job, they too refined and evolved as they went. But the length of the club now is basically as it should be in the modern era. In the old days, clubs were made too long and too short. But we now know scientifically the optimum length of shaft for a given type of head. But because we're individuals, we can change the angle of the neck, and that is called the lie of the club. In these Ping S55 irons, there's a groove in the hosel that allows us to bend the clubs perfectly to suit the height and proportion of a person's body. Now, let's relate that to the golf swing. If we take the longest club in the bag, the driver, our swing, is going to be long and flat and very rotational, great for distance hitting fairways. As the club becomes shorter, we have to move in and our spinal angle changes. And then we get to the wedge and we're leaning forward the most. So you can see that even in modern times with modern equipment, there's again an evolutionary phase of posture. This is normal, this is driver posture, six arm posture and wedge posture. It's essential to understand from the evolution of the swing biomechanically that the angle of the spine changes. A lot of you guys at home will think, oh, I thought the swing stayed the same. I thought the swing was the same for every club. The answer is no. The swing morphs. It's upright with a wedge. It's flat with a driver. There's 12 or 13 degrees plane shift uh, as we take notice of the length of the club. However, every time we use a golf club, we're doing three things. We're preparing for the shot in hand. We've made a choice. We've taken the correct implement for that choice and we build our posture around the shape of the club. Now, I can create power. And universally in the modern era, the left shoulder gets to the throat. In the old days of hickory, the arms and the, and the club were up here and the body turned on a flatter plane. As the spinal posture has improved from Bobby Jones to Tiger Woods, the rotation of the modern swing is upright but coiled. In the old days, it was a separated movement. It's much more connected. 
Now again, there are two schools of thought in the modern era regarding one plane and two plane swings. We know that hickory players had a two plane movement and I believe that the modern player is going to be one plane with his driver and by the time he gets his sand iron the swing will have become two plane. I don't want to have a driver swing that is two plane nor do I want a sand wedge swing that's one plane. The whole point of the varying length of clubs is that the swing plane changes from the shortest wedge to the longest driver. So, one plane swings and two plane swings are not separate entities, they're just ends of a spectrum. The club maker, in the evolution of the golf swing, has made a driver long, so you favour a one plane rotational movement. By the time you get to your wedge, you've shifted to a two plane motion, which gives you more accuracy. So there we have it. We're talking about the evolution of swing. We have an evolution of design of clubs. And alongside that, there's an evolution in the understanding of the proportion of clubs and the effect on the human body. It's amazing the scores that Bobby Jones made with hickory shafted clubs. If you compare those handmade weapons to the precision instruments of the day, it's quite remarkable the scores that he made in the 20s and early 1930s. Then again, Bobby Jones and all of his type, I think, had some sort of genius.